على اله وصحابته والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم قلت لكم مرة قد قلت لكم غير ما مرة ان مولد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم معناه أن الناس يفرحون بنعمة ويتصدقون ويمدحون سيد الأنام ويذكرون مولد الختام وبعثه والسيرة النبية والسيرة السنية والخلق مع أوصافه البهية لا يزيد على معنى أن الناس يفرحون بنعمة ويتصدقون ويمدحون سيد الأنام ويذكرون مولد الختام. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. After praising Allah and sending salutations on the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, Sheikh Salik حفظه الله. He said that as we mentioned multiple multiple times in the past that a true celebration of the blessed birth of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, what we call the Mawlid and Nabi al-Sharif. Is a celebration in which we do the following things. Number one, we rejoice in thee as being. Uh, and the first that we rejoice in the blessing of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that we give charity on that day. And, and that we praise the Master of all of creation. And we remember and recall the stories that surround his blessed birth. And mentioning such things as his blessed birth, his uh, being sent as a Prophet and his migration from Mecca to Medina, and his and his characteristic and descriptions and his character these are the types of things that we recall and we mention we talk about them we remember them we teach them in order to gain that benefit and this is what is meant by the hadith of the Prophet that whoever initiates a good practice in this religion will get the reward of all who act on it without that being diminished. So this is an innovation that is considered a good, it is considered a good innovation and hence Sheikh Sadiq is repeating what Sayyidina Umar said after the 20 rakats of Tarawih were established when he said what an excellent innovation this is. And Sheikh Salik adding that Sayyidina Umar's words to this innovation, that wonder, wonderful innovation is the one in which we rejoice on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and do the things he just mentioned. And whoever does not accept this and understand this and acts upon it, and whoever does not respect and honor this, then there is no. To the one who does not respect the molid in the description that he just gave, whoever does not respect it and accept it, then there's no good in that kind of a person. وبهذه المناسبة نقرأ قصيدة العلامة محمد الحسن بن الخديم حفظه الله تعالى ابن عمنا وبعد ذلك نتكلم على فوائد وإن شاء الله نختم المجلس إن شاء الله. He's going to now read a blessed poem written by the great scholar Muhammad bin Hassan. كتبها في ذكريات المولد النبوي. Sheikh Muhammad bin Hassan, one of the most renowned of the scholars of our time, has written a beautiful poem in praise of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. Uh, he wrote it about the days of Rabi uh, al the month that we're in, about the birth of the Prophet, وسلم, who also happens to be the cousin of Sheikh Salik. Uh, 
إن المحب لا في وادي يهيم كما سوى المحب يهيم الدهر في وادي مدح النبي دليل الحب مبغضه مضن الفؤاد بما يخفي من أحقاد وليس من خاله سودا يلد له تعمير وقت بأحزاب وأوراد ولا لأحوال أهل الذكر مغتبط ولا لروضته الغلاب مرتاد شهر الربيع ربيع للقلوب له ترتاح ممن دروا بسر الإجاد فالناس ما بين محزون ومبتهج بعيد مولد طه الجاد الجاد يشد الحشجي على رغم الخلي به أمداح طه بإنشاء وإنشاد قد كان ميلاد خير شهر مولده وإن ميلاد خير خير ميلادي ومذهبا تراحا ومكسبا فرحا ففيه راحة أرواح وأجسادي يا مسلمون استهل اليوم عيدكم فعاد يمن عليكم رايح غادي دمتم يعود عليكم من سعادتكم في كل عام بإسعاف وإسعادي تحدثوا بحديث عنه يطربكم واستنشقوا منه عرف الرند والجاد وأكثروا قربا وأظهروا طربا شكرا لنعمتي جاد وإمدادي وظاهر الشرع ذنبه بباطنه جمعا وتنية من دون الإفراد فأظموا وجدوا في توسلكم سيرا بسيرة آباء وأجداد إن التوسل بالهادي ما ننكره قال الوزان زوى عن ملة الهادي إذا من الدين باد بالضرورة ما إن هو يخفى على المصري والبادي تعظيم مولده أجرى به عملا من الهدى ذو رشد وإرشاد وملك إربال بعض الصالحين قفا فيه وكان من الأفراد الأجواد وذلك العلماء رضوه إذ حضروا لأنه عادل ما هو بالعادي وكم من أطواد علم صنفت كتبا بالحسن تروي أطواد عن أطواد فمنكر عمل الميلاد قد رصدوا له كما قعدوا في كل مرصاد إن السيوطي في حاويه جاء بما من الأدلة يشفي غلة الصاد وليس من ليس في ورد ولا صدر يحكيه في حسن إصدار وإيراد والقسط اللامي والشامي والحلب والقارئ الجزري حلية النادي مع العراق ومن ينمى إلى حجر إلى سواهم من أغطاب وأوتاد يرون ذا العمل الجاري به حسنا والكل ذو خبرة طلع وأنشاد تلك الأئمة حفاظ الحديث رووا عن كل ثبت صحيح الفهم نقاد وما تصانفهم تحويه من حجج فإن يرد بإبراق وإرعاد فمن تعرض للإنكار ينشده لسان حاليهم بنغمة الشاد قد أترك القرن مصفرا أنامله كأن أثوابه مجت بفرصاد فعجب لإنكاري والفضل نسبته قصر عليه بتعيين وإفراد قد ضجت الأرض لما قام ينكره ظل ابن ظل خطيبا فوق أعوادي يروي أحاديث نفس عنه ليس لها تصحيح متن ولا تصحيح إسناد ما إن يزال قضايا الشرع يعكسها عكس الناقض يعاني جمع أضدادي فالأمر أصبح في أيدي غيلمات قد أفسد الدين بغيا نيا يسادي عدوا على مالك والأشعاري ومن يغفل جنيد وكل مرشد هادي فيا باقية أهل العلم جهدكم قوموا بإبعاد عاد كل إبعاد 
فالله يكفله دا أضرارهم ويقيد منهم ومن شر أعداء وحسد بجاه طه بجاه طه الذي حق الفداء له بأنفس وبأموال وأولاد صلى عليه مع الأصحاب قاطبة رب تعالى عن أضداد وأنداد ما أن مولد خير الخلق محترم عيد سعيد لخير قائد حادي تصد أبصار أهل الزيض عنه وما أبصار أهل الهدى عنه بصداد وما إلى حق قاد المحق وما أباه زيغ قلب غير قاد انتهت القصيدة الجميلة المفيدة وفيها أحكام كثيرة بأدلة المولد النبي ولكن سنعرض أن نتعرض لشيء من أوصاف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ونختم بها كبشا this again is a blessed poem of the Prophet Sallallahu mm-hmm. We read for the blessing of it and there's a lot of rulings and different uh, sciences attached to it. But we're going to take uh, some points and speak about the blessed descriptions or uh, 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 characteristics of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu <laughs> الشمس تظهر للعينين من بعود صغيرة وتكل الطرف من أمام أعيا الورافة من النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لذلك عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها لما سئلت عنه لم تطل الكلام لأنها أرادت أن تبحث وتبحث لا يمكن أن تنهي الكلام عنه فقالت كان خلقه القرآن أعيا الورافة هو معناه ولذلك ورد في الحديث لا يعرفني على الحقيقة غير ربي The, the reality of the Prophet mm-hmm. is quite beyond our grasp mm-hmm. and Imam al-Busayri mentioned some lines that have, um, mm-hmm. basically that the creation is unable to grasp him that when they uh, ponder or look upon him they look with a glance that is very far from its actual reality it's a distance beyond their comprehension although it may look as if it's close enough to reach or, or, or to understand. For this reason, Sheikh said that when Sayyidah Aisha was asked about the description of the Prophet Muhammad she chose incredibly intelligently, wisely, in that she did not give a description that would not befit his noble characteristic. And out of her intelligence, she used an incredible comprehensive statement in which she said that his character was that of the Quran, best describing his beautiful characteristics and makeup. For that reason also, the Shaykh said that there's a hadith that the Prophet said, no, no one knows my true reality except my Lord, that he's the only one that truly knows my reality. لماذا تفتتن النساء بيوسف ولم تفتتن بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو قطعا أجمل من يوسف لماذا قال لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرسل للناس رحمة فغطى الجلال جماله فلو أنه لو أن الناس رأوه على حقيقة لفتن النساء ولكن الله تعالى أرسله رحمة للعالمين فلم يعبده أحد كعيسى ولم يفتتن به النساء كيوسف عليه السلام لأن الله تعالى أرسله للناس رحمة أرسله for that reason one asked then why is the uh, when we talk about beauty the beauty of Yusuf is often what is described although the Prophet Muhammad sallam, is more handsome and more beautiful than Yusuf is sallam. so for what reason is that mentioned and Shaykh said because he sent as a mercy to all the worlds the Prophet sallam, his his uh, majestic characteristics and beauty over uh, kind of outstripped or was more prominent than his qualities of uh, 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 external beauty. Because and for the reason that if people saw his actual beauty and how beautiful and handsome he was, uh, that it would have led to a type of fitna or a trial for women and others in the sense that they would not be able to hold themselves from his incredible beauty, number one. And number two, perhaps it might have led some to perhaps worship him. 
So for that reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want to tribulate the people, so he hid his actual beauty behind his majestic qualities. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he sent them as a mercy to the world, and that mercy meant that there was a protective covering for all of the people. Ibn al-Farid, one of the great poets, he said that had the women of Yusuf uh, the, seen the Prophet Muhammad <laughs> on his actual, when the covers are removed and it could have seen him exactly the way he truly is, then as you know the story with Yusuf they cut their wrists with the knife, they would have actually cut their hearts out, meaning killed them, uh, they would die out of the incredible beauty of the Prophet <laughs> for that reason, Sayyidah Aisha knew his true reality and his beauty. That's why she said some lines of poetry that are related from her in which she said, more perfect and complete in your beauty, no eye has ever seen. No one perfect was ever born to anyone than you. And you were created. No one ever gave birth to anyone more perfect than you. And it was as if uh, you were created the way you wanted to be created. It is as if you got to create yourself or you chose the way you wanted. Yeah. It's as if you were present when you were created or designed yourself and you got to choose your perfections. And the proof for this is what Sayyidina Ali describes him as that no eye has ever seen anything more beautiful before or after than the Prophet Muhammad these next lines are very beautiful. Sheikh read another poem from Ibn al Farid that basically mentions that the perfection of the Prophet ﷺ, in, uh, his, both his outward makeup and beauty as well as his internal uh, uh, prophetic character and inward realities were such that had this light of his been manifest to a, a full moon, that moon, would, uh, that moon would never ever lose its splendor even until time runs out. And also of his majestic and beautiful qualities, even if the people who praise them, like Imam al Busayri and <laughs> Hassan al Fadr, from the first of the great people that praised and, and, and mentioned the noble qualities of the Prophet, like Hassan ibn Thabit, from the time of the companions, or Imam al Busayri, or until the end, they would continue to praise him, praise him, and mention his good qualities, etc. And time would run out before they would truly be able to uh, describe the beauty or give him his true description and it would be completed. And the proof of this is what Sheikh Salik mentions that how can you reach a level of praise and in that 
Allah Himself, the pre-eternal, uh, uh, without yeah. any beginning, without any end, has praised Him with a pre-eternal speech that has no beginning and has no end. When Allah Himself has praised them, then the creation can never reach the level of the praise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. <laughs> لم يقسم الله بحياة أحد غير النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كما قال ابن عباس إن هي الحياة حقيقة. And as Allah subhanahu wa taala mentioned in the Quran two different ayahs that he mentioned number one verily the Prophet has this خلق عظيم which is a character that is عظيم that he is above perfected character and his character is what the Lord of the Worlds describes as tremendously great and grand. So that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praising him. Second, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He does not take in the entire Quran an oath by anyone else's life except that of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he, when he swears by his life that those who uh, are, are, are uh, kufar, yani, huh? mm -hmm. no. that Allah uh, swear, basically swears by the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then mentions a statement about the wrongdoers, how they are in, in their own wrongs uh, 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 being punished basically. Yeah. So actually what that also shows is that the life of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is a true, noble, worthy life. يأتي فضائل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أشجع الناس وأكرم الناس وأعظم الناس وأرحم الناس وأشد الناس لا تأتي فضيلة له كما قال الصحابة إلا بأفعل أفعل أفضل لا تأتي كريم أو يكرم أكرم أفضل أشد لا تأتي إلا بمعنى أفعل لا صفة التفضيل no. And all the descriptions of the Prophet وسلم, that the different hadiths describe, they never say he was generous or he was merciful. It says he was the most merciful, he was the most gracious, and he was the most bravest. So these are in the Arabic pattern, the pattern that describes the utmost of the quality that it describes. أكرم يعني كل فضيلة سواء كانت للشجاعة أو الشدة أو الرحمة أو الغضب كان لا يقوم لغضبه أحد يغضب غضبا لله تعالى ولا وأرحم الناس الناس تؤذي ولا ينتصر لنفسه فهو أرحم من جهة وأشد من جهة now also this balance is to be understood that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the most merciful of the companions he was also the most uh, bravest but also he was the most angry when anger was the it was the right situation to show anger so when he got angry for the sake of Allah no one was as angry as him and no one had a sternness and a, and a, and a strictness uh, then uh, uh, he did sallallahu alaihi wasallam when it did, when it called for that it's fine لا يقوم لاحده لغضبه احد مطلقا عندما يغضب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لله تعالى لا يقوم لاحده غضب احد غضبه احد وإذا لم يكن ذلك في حق الله تعالى كحقه صلى الله عليه وسلم فيسقط حقه وهذا كان معروفا لا ينتصر لنفسه هذا معناه أرحم الناس وأشد الناس And again when he صلى الله عليه وسلم got angry it was never for his own self but for the sake of Allah he got angry in a way that no one would be able to tolerate or could handle his anger for the sake of Allah because that's what dictated correction of the companions and others لا إله إلا الله يرحم الله من الفارض حيث يقول أرى كل مدح للنبي مقصرا وإن بالغ المذني عليه وأكثرا إذا الله أذنى بالذي هو أهله عليه فما مقدر ما يمدح الورى أرى كل مدح للنبي مقصرا وَإِنْ بَالَغَ الْمُذْنِي عَلَيْهِ وَأَكْثَرًا Again, Ibn al-Farid said that every praise of the Messenger falls short. 
even if the people who met who praised him did so with as much exaggeration as they wanted it would still not match his beauty and his descriptions and his true uh, noble praiseworthy qualities uh, that Allah himself has praised so when Allah himself has praised that again reiterating his points before no way would the creation be able to praise him sallallahu <laughs> أو في الكرم أو بالقمر في 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 النور هذا قال خطأ. أيوه. في بحر بكرم. يعني لو شبهته في البحر بالكرم هذا حقيقة خطأ قال هذا. لأنه لا يشبه لأن البحر ناقص والقمر ناقص فلا يشبه يعني الأكمل بالناقص ولكن الأحسن هو قوله حسان كما سنبين إن شاء الله. طيب زي ف. صاحب قرة الأبصار قال إن قال إن تشبهه بالبحر هو ليس تخطئ البصي بل هو استدراك. ما ما البلغاء يقول هذا تخطي أخطأت إن شبهته لكن هو استدراك. نعم نعم. So the companion or the author of قرة الأبصار famous text on the life of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that Busayri has made a mistake in that he likens the generosity of the Prophet to the ocean. Meaning in the Arabic when they say it's like a bahar, like an ocean, uh, like an ocean. He, he, uh, uh, basically it is an Arabic saying that there's no, uh, its meaning is that there's no end to his generosity. But, but, uh, but what Sheikh is saying is that this is taking a level higher in that it says why even compare the Prophet to the ocean of mercy when really he's above any type of likening to that which the creation can uh, can uh, can can resemble of him because he's above and beyond all that and this is not a real mistake but this is to indicate uh, a level higher uh, to just uh, em emphasize to those that are listening and those that read. Or, or for example when they described his uh, luminous blessed face like being that of a full moon meaning that uh, or or like the sun in its brightness but the prophet in reality is brighter than that so why compare him to that which is in reality less than those descriptions but better than that is what the companion hassan said about him له راحة لو أن لو أن معشر جودها على البر كان البر أندى من البحر قال له همم لا منتهى لكبارها وهمة الصراء عظم من البحر أو عظم من الدهر كله والدهر منه البحر ومنه الدهر والهمم الكبرى له همم لا منتهى لكبارها كبارها لا منتهى ولكن همة الصراء أجل من الدهر أعظم من الدهر كله so this, uh, this, these lines are tough to translate, but it mentions that the himam or the aspiration of the Prophet <laughs> Muhammad <laughs> uh, it, it has absolute no end in his greater aspirations. There's absolutely no end to it. But as for his, the lowest of what the Prophet has of his, of his aspirations is that it, it is dahar, which means uh, 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 all of time basically all of time would not be able to cover all of time space would not be able to cover the breadth of his aspirations على البر وضع على البر كان البر أندام من البحر كان البر الأرض والجبال كانت أكثر ماء من البحر لو له كرم لو أن لو قدر معشار جود راحته وجعل على الأرض البرية لكانت بحرا لكانت هي أكثر بحرية من البحر 
No, no. Uh, in his generosity, the Prophet ﷺ has such a level of generosity that if if you were to take just ten percent of his generosity and put that generosity on mountains and lands, <laughs> uh, uh, on lands and 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 mountains that have no water, <laughs> that has no water, all of that would transform into oceans of water due to his generosity. كان البر عند من البحر له راحة لو أن معشر جودها على البر كان البر عند من البحر هذا حقيقة ليس مبالغة This is in no way This is not exaggeration This is the truth من جودك الدنيا وضرتها ومن علو as Imam al-Busayri, may Allah bless him, he mentioned that